Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I am your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and today I am joined by my esteemed co-host, Ricardo Martinez. Uh, and today we are interviewing Pavlenex, who works on BTC Pay Server and uh, Bitcoin Design, amongst other things, uh, and is a, uh, a Bitcoiner. Uh, and so, yeah, I guess first off, uh, Pavlex, how how are you doing today? How's your how's your day been so far? Um, yeah, thanks, Lawrence, for the intro. Uh, glad to be here. Big fan of you guys. What you've been working on, been following like the story from the beginning. So happy to be here and chat about things. It's been good. Uh, busy day working in open source, connecting with people. Mondays are usually busy because of the time zone differences. So yeah, happy to be here, and uh, I'm fired up to discuss. Uh, about Bitcoin, I guess, and all other things. Awesome, yeah, me, me too. I'm I'm happy to just uh, have a chat and see see where it takes us. And uh, it's awesome to e meet you for the for the first time. Um, so I guess uh, yeah, to, to to get us started, I'll I'll do what I always do, and I'll ask you just like a a question, uh, kind of going pulling back to your kind of earlier time in life, uh, so we can kind of get a real feel for who you are, I guess, as a person. Um, so yeah, I suppose my, my, my question, my first question is, um, you know, what was life uh, like for you before Bitcoin? What were you up to? Um, and how did you find and kind of gain an interest in Bitcoin? Um, how, how did that all kind of take off? Yeah, um, so uh, I'm just a regular guy. Uh, life before Bitcoin, there is just a single word to explain it meaningless. Like with Bitcoin, I was able to find meaning in whatever it is that I'm doing. So uh, before Bitcoin, I was just a regular guy uh, involved in the tech industry a little bit and then in a little bit of copywriting as well. Um, then I found out uh, about, you know, uh, I had like all sorts of e-commerce businesses. And uh, once I found uh, about Bitcoin via Andreas video, I wanted to buy a Bitcoin t-shirt. There wasn't a one that really suit my uh, taste. So I started an e-commerce business, uh, which is Bitcoin shirts. And throughout that, I um, figure out that I need a way to accept this Bitcoin thing. And then I found BTC Pay Server. And that, that's how things in my life, basically, it's a piece of the tiny puzzles that keeps on building or legal blocks or blocks <laughs> that keeps on adding up in this uh, blockchain of mine. So yeah, things just go naturally for me. I'm just really a regular guy. I don't have like any super experience working for any big companies. I don't have like any um, insane education behind myself, just a regular guy hustling my way through uh, Bitcoin right now. So yeah, that's, that's a summary, but if uh, you ask, like, uh, when was the first time that I found Bitcoin? I think it was 2013. And I tell the story on every podcast. And Britt Kelly from BTC Pay Server, I'm not sure if you know her. She uh, told me never to tell this story again because, like, she's tired of hearing it all over again. But I will. So, Britt, if you're listening, once again, I always dis give her this disclaimer. Just skip it. Uh, yeah, uh, I have a younger brother. And he was, like, uh, doing some web development thing. But he was, like, uh, 12 at the time. <laughs> And um, yeah, so um, he wanted to, you know, transact. He there, there was a guy he worked for and he needed to pay to him, but we didn't have PayPal here where I'm based up until 2016, I think, which is crazy if you look at from the, you know, any other uh, non-developing country. So she was a, she told me like, Pop, uh, yeah, there is this Bitcoin thing and uh, this guy needs to pay to me. So how do we do it? And I was like, man, that's a scam what Bitcoin think like it's there are other ways like well it's the Western Union and I think we ended up doing that so yeah uh, four years later I think it was actually 2016 um, I figure out through Andreas videos completely randomly and just you know dived into the rabbit hole uh, I even remember like it was a video I think it's uh, the internet of money or something like that I think most of us uh, but then in the back of my hand uh, the, the timestamps do, do not match my uh, my memory when, when was the first time I, I'm quite sure that I went into Bitcoin and in 2016 but the video was published in early 2017 so it's weird but yeah that's a summary of my story. Yeah, it does. It gives a little bit of a kind of insight as to because I, I find it interesting how yeah different guests, different people I speak to, uh, everyone kind of seems to have this different path into Bitcoin as to like why they're interested in it and 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 like almost like how they came across it. So like for yourself, it was more like e-commerce side as to as to how you came across it. It's like well, hey, I want to 
um, accept a different payment method, or as you said, there's like PayPal wasn't an issue, wasn't wasn't present. Um, so like from an e-commerce point of view, it kind of exposes you to Bitcoin. Um, whereas lots of people have different reasons. I suppose like um, an interesting thing to me because you've kind of touched on 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 kind of going down the rabbit hole and kind of what the value you saw in Bitcoin. But like, what would you say is kind of the um, if there is one thing, if not I guess two, but what would you say is the one thing that really kind of stuck to you like what was the one thing that really was it that appealed to you about bitcoin was it something more technical or the ability for payments to be for everyone or the deflationary aspect or the kind of uh, ability for people to take control of, of money again kind of thing what was your what was it to you, to you that stuck out yeah i guess just the ability that it gives freedom to anybody like to me that was like uh, eye-opening because I really didn't understand it in the beginning like I tried to get some but here where I live we didn't have any exchanges and when when I tried to see how I can get those bitcoins that I you know learned about it was really hard for me to to get it so I started doing some freelance work and then people just you know asked me for address I provided them address and I had them bitcoins in my wallet which was to me like wait I don't have to register anywhere and like there are no fees and there is no like a company that's holding this now for me so I can spend it. And then I tr tried, you know, I tr started uh, hiring freelancers for, for myself, for other businesses. And then I simply, it worked and it made uh, sense to me logically because I come from, a, as I said, already like a developing country. Uh, we did, don't have like all of those. Uh, well, at least we do have them now, but we didn't have them like a few years ago. Like uh, even credit cards here weren't as much used. And to me, like just being able to transact without any overhead, um, it, it was eye opening because people usually say Bitcoin has bad UX, Bitcoin is this and that. But in the reality, it's very simple, right? You just don't have those barriers that you have with other legacy financial systems and people who, uh, who have the access to those simply do not understand, um, you know, uh, cannot understand Bitcoin in the same way. I get uh, that people from developing countries, usually Bitcoin clicks naturally for them. We even had like uh, inflation, hyperinflation here in the 90s. So to me, um, deflationary aspect of Bitcoin, like the limited uh, supply cap, all of that made sense to me, it just clicked, you know. And then afterwards, I was like dived into a technical side a bit more, but it was just, you know, basic properties of Bitcoin that drew me into, into the rabbit hole. The BTC Pay project is probably one of the most important projects uh, for infrastructure being built on top of Bitcoin. How long have you been involved with, with the project? Uh, I've been involved since the beginning, basically. Um, that e-commerce side of um, that I was involved and wanted to accept Bitcoin payments. I tried a few other providers, but coming from a country where I, you know, it was very hard. They asked me for passports and all sorts of documentation. And we naturally are suspicious of those things because, you know, we don't trust governments. We don't trust companies. It's basically like how, because we, we were scammed by banks in the nineties. We were scammed by, you know, governments. And I'm always careful with my, you know, providing data to anybody. And to me, that's how I started to explore how I can accept Bitcoin. And then I realized, well, wait, this is very similar to like trying to find Stripe or PayPal because all of these guys asked me for the same information and they now you know, want me to provide all sorts of things. And so to me, it didn't really make sense. So I think that I made a post on Reddit and then some guy started yelling at me like, you're dumb, like Bitcoin really does not work that way. You shouldn't use, a, you know, trust a third party in order to accept payments. And he started yelling basically. And at that time I was like, why is he yelling at me? Like, why? And then he told me like, there is this little project, BTC Pay server, this French guy made it and he shared a tweet with me or I don't remember it was really GitHub repository. So I come to Slack, there are like five people in or 10 people in the Slack, they're talking about something. And then I ask, hey, I want to accept Bitcoin payments. And Nicholas simply goes ballistic, like, oh, fuck, we have somebody who wants to accept payments finally. And he started like explaining to me, well, you need to do this. And now you wait two weeks. And I'm like, why do I need to wait two weeks? And he's like, well, you know, node needs to sync up and we have, and it costs $60, you know, to run this thing on a server. I'm like, why, wait, why, why does this even work this way? But I then quickly realized that it really, we improved it over the time. Now it takes really, you, you can deploy your BTC based server instantly. There is like no need to wait for things. And yeah, we improved quite a lot. But uh, to answer your question, sorry, Ricardo, I'm like ranting a little bit because it brings lots of memories to me. Like, 
Um, to me, being able to you know talk to Nicola at, in the beginning, a rock star developer, and then Cooks, it really opened um, access to all these smart people that I learned from and that uh, allowed me to grow basically in this space as well. And with that, that's always what I try to allow other people as well. Like uh, try, I try to be accessible the same way they were to me in order to, so to other people to be able to grow the same way I did. So it, it is, uh, I think it's four years now, I think, or yeah, four years since I've I've been involved into BTC Pacer. I've been there from the from the very beginnings of see, seeing all the hardships that we had. And yeah, simply saw the project grew from uh, 10 people in Slack to thousands of users right now. And there are like big companies that use BTC Pacer, which is really awesome to see and quite motivating as well. It's quite a cool story in a sense of like a... Uh kind of like stumbling into this kind of chat and then just being like you know i'm interested in suddenly people being like whoa <laughs> yeah there's someone uh there's someone actually wants to use this uh this uh service of that we're providing or we're going to provide i think that's quite cool um especially since yeah from their perspective they maybe were thinking of building this this thing and then they weren't sure necessarily that it would actually take off or people would want to use it so it's, it's got to be good for them that you kind of popped up um i guess like uh since obviously you've been working on BTC Pay Server and uh, uh, and kind of helping with it from the very 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 beginning, uh, making it what it is. Uh, one one of the questions here is like, hey, you know, say I'm I've never heard of BTC Pay Server before ever, um, and I'm someone who's brand new listening to this podcast. Um, tell me, you know, what is BTC Pay Server? Why should I care? And how do I use it? Basically, how do I go ahead? I'm spin up a you know a node or, or get get going with btc pay server yeah sure that's an awesome question um there are like two ways of explaining it. When, whenever i try to explain it to friends i start with uh, you know we have paypal now here in order to accept payments you need to use their infrastructure register on their website and then they take fees out of you but with bitcoin um you basically have the software that you can run on your machine computer server whatever and you're able to get access to all this uh, infrastructure that PayPal has accept, accepting payments. Just you're your own payment processor. You're your own PayPal. You own the PayPal. Imagine if PayPal opened their technology and allow everybody to use it for free uh, and just cutting off uh, middlemen. So BTC Pay Server in a way is free and open source payment processor that allows people to accept Bitcoin payments without any processing fee and without the involvement of a third party. So uh, it is used by a uh, very different uh, type of people and merchants. Like you have uh, very hardcore Bitcoiners using it just to manage their funds because BTC Pay Server is way more than just a payment processor. Basically, it's a payment platform. We like to call it modular payment platform because we're building it, as Ricardo earlier mentioned, as a infrastructure software that allows you to build on top of Bitcoin, if and if, even if you're a developer, merchant, or just a regular user, just wanting to you know experiment with Bitcoin, BTC Pay Server as a software gives you all sorts of flexibility to basically accept Bitcoin payments. So if there is like, if I can explain BTC Pay Server simply, it would be just ex accept Bitcoin payments, and that's all. It it allows you to accept Bitcoin payments, and later on you can do insane amount of. Uh, things with it. It is very flexible and very importantly, it's free and open source. It's built by a contributors around the world. At this point, it is very hard to count how many people contributed to BTC Pay Server, probably over 150. And I'm not even including like translators because just our translating community has probably over 100 people. So quite a lot of people are helping bring BTC Pay Server to the world for free. It's pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool vision, actually. And then to see it being successfully built with the help of like lots of different people as well is is pretty cool um I, I definitely think i'm a i'm a fan of what's been done um i suppose like um a question for yourself actually here like you know i, I understand now as i say I'm a, I'm a first time listener first time never heard of pcc pace ever i understand uh what it does and and why i should care um i suppose the question now is like hey like you know when it comes to um yourself like what what do you do like what's your what's your current role what are you you know what have you built or helped with what are you building helping with like what's your you know what what do you do i guess is the, is the basic question i suppose with the btc pay server 
Yeah, sure. So my role, um, they call me the janitor of the BTC based server. I do all the cleaning, all the organization, and uh, I'm currently the most mostly involved in uh, helping structure the development process and release cycle of the BTC based server. I am in a way, um, and it's not just me, like there are quite a few more people assisting me with this, but yeah, I'm uh, trying to bridge the gap between end users and then the core team and developers around BTC based server and try to, you know, make it fun for everybody, for users to use it, for BTC pay server developers to have like, when whenever there is a bug report or just a user who doesn't know to explain, because, you know, users come to BTC pay server and they have all, all sorts of questions. And uh, the most problematic thing is just structuring what they really, really are asking and, you know, uh, how that information can be condensed and uh, communicated to a developer who just needs this few sentences in order to fix a bug or develop a new feature. So I'm trying to bridge a gap between that. Uh, I was also earlier involved in content making. I made a, quite a lot of videos, but with my accent, as you can hear, it's not uh, the best. So people sometimes complain, but yeah, uh, there is this angry, they call me angry Russian guy, you know, explaining BTC pay server to people on YouTube. <laughs> I'm like, well, okay, now we have other contributors, so now they can make proper British accent. So yeah, uh, no no offense to your accent, Lawrence, but yeah, people seem to care about accents these days. So yeah, I'm just now trying to, you know, also help people um, get involved with the BTC pay server, trying to, you know, uh, make space for them as well to grow the same way I did. I'm just a regular guy and the BTC pay server and the crew around it really helped uh, change my life. I'm never ashamed to, you know, tell this. They, they really changed my life. And we are just became more than colleagues. We are really, all of us are really friends at this point, just building cool software with friends. That's just uh, something that uh, is great opportunity to me. So I try to involve other people and, you know, try to also connect them, how they can contribute, see how I can motivate people to contribute. And yeah, but yeah, uh, simply said, I'm janitor. That's how they call me. But in a uh, big company terms or yeah, fancy language, that would be like a project or product management side of stuff. So I find like when it comes to like work or like, I don't know, I guess, yes, yeah, it's work, isn't it? At the end of the day, uh, I guess when it comes to that kind of side of things, it's um you can tell when you're talking to someone who is just working because they've got to work and they've got to make a living and whatever, build a career for a pension and all this kind of stuff. You can tell the difference between when you talk to someone like that and then you can tell the difference when you talk to someone like that and then you talk to someone who um, is doing it because they want to and then the people around them are also doing it because they want to. And then as a byproduct, you become very close with the people because you both share an extremely you know, powerful vision um, that you all see the kind of value in uh, and i can definitely tell that with the the way that you talk about btc pay server and, and your current role and what you do uh, that you're kind of sharing a pretty strong vision with uh, you know your colleagues and now friends uh, which is a pretty cool thing to hear and um i guess it just always endears uh, endears someone to a service right like it makes you even more into the idea of utilizing a service if you know the people working on it are doing it because they have the love for it not because you know faceless nameless career driven ambitions etc i guess like a, a cool question actually i suppose what what do you think um if btc pay server didn't exist um you know everything else did bitcoin still exists we're still on the same planet what what would you what do you think you'd be doing like where do you think life would uh, it's, a, it's a hard question but where do you think life might have taken you i guess if you if you kind of extract btc pay server from it like what do you think you would have gravitated towards do you think you would have found another way to kind of work more in in bitcoin and, and open source software or or, or what Wow, you're now trying to make me really depressed. I don't know. I cannot even imagine how my life would be right now. Like just thinking back about it, it would probably be me either being an entrepreneur of some sort, running some sort of e-commerce business probably because that's what I'm always passionate about. But yeah, uh, I'm not sure, really. I, I really couldn't imagine where I would be if I, if there wasn't for Nicola Doria, Rockstar there, Cooks, and other people in BTC Pay Server who dragged me into, into this, uh, uh, yeah, basically community. We've been right, uh, like through a lot of lots of things together because BTC Pay Server. Now we have like BTC Pay Server Foundation, which is helping you know fund people who work for BTC Pay Server. But in the early days, as you said, of BTC Pay. It was just like a few of us building a software and, you know, relying on, on people donations to for the income. And it overtook my life because I really didn't care for the income at that point. I just 
uh, it clicked for me like this really makes a lot of sense people need access to this kind of software and let's try to you know make it accessible to people like let's try to improve it make it easier to run make it easier to use so to me it's like uh, i i really cannot imagine what i would be doing and i really don't want to think about it less. so <laughs> yeah uh, as as I said, we worked for on BTC Pay server for two years be, before we formed. That's basically free work, and we simply enjoyed it. We invested uh, all of our time. I then quit all of my other initiatives, projects, goals that I have, because to me it just clicked. Uh, I found the meaning uh, through contributing to BTC Pay server, and that's all, the only thing that mattered. Later on, we we'll, we were able to find a model which works for us, uh, have a BTC based server foundation, which funds the work of uh, myself and tens of other contributors at this point. We are growing, we have corporate support, supporters supporting us, allowing us to uh, work what we re uh, really love and allowing other people to use BTC based server freely. So yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, I cannot even imagine what it would be <laughs> if uh, it wasn't for BTC pay. <laughs> 